Okay? So, we are given different figures under the last column. Uh, the operations of the uh, investor, uh, the acquirer. So, uh, you will notice that under the 30% ownership, under the equity method or the strategic active investment influential, then the investor will record uh, 30% of the income reported by the investee. So, in other words, the investee is reporting uh, income of 8,000. 30% of it will be uh, given to the investor with 30% ownership. Now, in the case of 80% uh, ownership, then the investor will be receiving uh, the full amount of income, 80% uh, of it, uh, because the investor owns 80% of the interest in the investee corporation. So, and 80%, uh, 30 plus 80 uh, plus uh, we have now the 8,000 uh, income of the investee, then that will be 36,400. 8,000 uh, times 20% uh, non-controlling interest will go to the non-controlling interest group. So the consolidated net income of the investor is still equal to uh, 38,000 the consolidated net income including the non-controlling interest. Now do not worry with the last two columns because uh, they are only given as uh, illustrations however complete discussions will be made from chapters 3, 4, and 5. With a 10% passive investment, the investor included only its share of the dividends declared by the investee uh, as its income. With a 30% influential ownership, the investor reported a 30% of the investee income as separate source of income. And with an 80% controlling interest, the investor, now known as the parent, merges the investee's uh, nominal accounts with its own accounts. Dividend and investment income no longer exist as uh, later on you learn that we have what we call the elimination process. Okay, so we have now the... Uh, since this is only an 80% investment, the net income must be shown as distributed between the controlling interest, that's the parent's income, plus 80% of the subsidiary's income, and the non-controlling interest, which is the 1,600 share, uh, 1,600 share of the non-controlling or the minority interest. Now, acquisition of net assets versus acquisition of stock uh, voting uh, over the equity. So, we have stock or the equity. Conceptually, a group which comprises a parent and its subsidiaries is a type of business combination. So, it's only a type uh, of business combination. That's a parent and a subsidiary. Now, that comprises what we call a group. And it's a type of business combination. A group is a business combination in which the acquirer is the parent and the acquiry is a subsidiary. Now, business combination results from the parent acquiring a controlling interest in the equity, not net assets of 
the subsidiary. So, in the equity meaning, the shareholders' equity. In this business combination, both parent and subsidiary retain their status as separate legal entities. However, from an economic perspective, they are a single reporting entities. In other words, uh, they retain their status as separate legal entities. However, they are a single reporting entity uh, for the sake of uh, the economic perspective. No? So, bali may uh, separate legal entities sila and they are single reporting entity. Now, two sets of financial statements must be prepared. Separate financial statements for the legal entity and consolidated financial statements for the group. So, separate for the legal entity, that's the uh, apparent and the subsidiary, and now we have the consolidated for the group. Separate financial statements of the legal entity in accordance with PES 27 separate financial statements and consolidated financial statements if the legal entity is also apparent in accordance with PFRS 10 consolidated financial statements. This is in contrast with pure business combination whereby an acquirer buys over the net assets of another entity brought about by the purchase of net assets, not equity of the other entity, does not result in parent-subsidiary relationship. Now, when you only have the purchase of net assets of another entity, in this business combination, the legal and economic entities are one. Separate financial statements of the acquirer provide information about the enlarged entity. Likewise, a set of consolidated financial statements is not required. Now, the focus of this chapter on uh, the business combination in general that results to a parent subsidiary relationship which is properly termed as consolidation so we have now the parent subsidiary relationship termed as consolidation PFRS 3 presumes that there is a dominant party in a business combination which may be identified as an acquirer so that's now your uh, dominant party classification of intercorporate investment an intercorporate investment is any purchase by one corporation of the securities of another corporation broadly speaking the investment may be either so you have now your inter corporate investment purchased by one corporation of the securities of another. Now, the investment may be either in debt securities or equity securities, preferred or common, or we say preference shares or ordinary shares. Now, when we talk about debt securities, for example, your bonds payable. The focus of this text is on equity, ordinary shares or common stock investments. The investment of a corporation in the equity of another corporation can broadly be classified as either passive or strategic. Now, the ones that we had earlier. A passive investment is made to earn dividends or to earn profits 
by actively trading the investment for a short profit. A strategic active investment is made to significantly influence or control the operations of the investee or acquiree corporation. Now, for the passive investments, accounting for passive investments poses no particular problem. They are initially recorded at cost, reported at fair market value on each period statement of financial position or balance sheet. The treatment of gains and losses depends on how the company has elected to classify the investment choice that the reporting entity makes for each separate passive equity investments when the investment is first uh, made. So we have now your uh, passive investments. The choices available under PFRS 9 financial instruments are to report investment at either fair value through profit or loss or fair value through other comprehensive income. If an equity investment is under uh, fair value through profit or loss, both dividends and the change in fair value from one period to another are reported in the net income section of the statement of comprehensive income. So uh, we have now the, uh, the uh, items uh, to be reported in the income uh, section that would be the change in fair value from one period to another. It uh, should be reported in the net income section of the statement of comprehensive income. If, on the other hand, an equity investment is classified as fair value through other comprehensive income, dividends from that investment are recognized in net income, but changes in the fair value of the investment are treated as other comprehensive income. So we have these two rules, one applicable to fair value through profit or loss, and the other one is uh, an equity investment uh, classified as fair value through other comprehensive income that dividends are recognized in net income but changes in the fair value are reported as other comprehensive income. Okay, the accumulated gains and losses are reported as separate component of stockholders' equity. Now take note that most of these uh, rules would apply to the manner of recording or uh, the treatment or classification of these items. The choice to classify an equity investment as fair value through other comprehensive income is irrevocable. The choice cannot be changed subsequently. Now, this is uh, very uh, important. So, but but it cannot be changed subsequently. Okay, next, we have strategic active investments provide strategic or long-term advantage by giving the investor the ability to either significantly influence or control the operating or financial decisions of an investee. Strategic equity investments can take several different forms depending on the investor's strategic uh, objectives. Controlled entities, subsidiaries under PS27 and PFRS10 
structured entities or variable interest entities associated uh, companies PS uh, 28 and joint ventures PFRS number uh, 11 generally investments are considered strategic if a company owns uh, either directly or indirectly 20% or more of the voting shares of the investee unless it can be clearly be demonstrated that the investments are passive. So we have now the rules on how to consider the investment as strategic. In the summary ahead, it was mentioned that it's passive if the investment is below 20% and it will be 20% or more it will be strategic either influential or controlling so we have now this uh, rules so generally investments are considered strategic if a company owns either directly or indirectly 20% or more of the voting shares of the investee unless it can be clearly demonstrated that the investments are passive. In the following sections and uh, chapters, the focus is on the concept of control which is one of the two basic concepts that underline accounting for strategic investment. The other one is significant influence which is not covered in this chapter discussion. So we have to go to the next chapter. Oh, by the way, uh, you are dismissed. Uh, though, ma-open lang kamo karon YouTube nyo for the remaining, ano pa lang ni nga slide ang natapos naton kay damo damo pagin. So, bali, sa 97, ang natapos pa lang naton, 12 pa lang. So, meaning, may mga 83 pa ka slides nga nabilin, which I'm going to discuss the contents. Uh, mabigay na kong subo. So, you can already exit. Uh, you are dismissed. Sa gabi, uh, pwede nyo na ma-open uh, sa gabi. Ha? Ay, ti, may klase pa ka madugay-dugay. Uh, but, in the evening, after your class, paway lang kag uh, mag-open ka mo sa YouTube. Okay? Is that clear now? Hello? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Oh, sige, bye-bye. Bye-bye. YouTube lang karon ha. YouTube lang ha.